Alright, in this video we want to discuss a mechanism by which horizontal gene transfer can occur, and this mechanism is called conjugation. So let's quickly address what horizontal gene transfer is, and then we'll look at the details of conjugation. So uh, gene transfer is any mechanism by which genetic material is transmitted from one cell to another cell. And this happens all the time in biology. The most common way that this happens is through a mechanism called vertical gene transfer. And vertical gene transfer is any time that an organism passes genetic material to its offspring. So here we have a simple bacterial cell going through cell division, creating two copies of itself. And both of these cells received genetic material from that parent cell. Again, that's the most common way that gene transfer occurs. It passes genetic material from parent to offspring. And what it, in this mechanism, what we create are genetically identical offspring, especially in microbiology. So while this is critically important, it's not particularly interesting to us because all the organisms are the same. We're really interested in how can we create new forms of organisms, organisms with new combinations of genetic traits. How can organisms change the capabilities that they have? So that's where we start looking at horizontal gene transfer. So again, this is any time, or gene transfer is any time that genetic material is passed from one cell to another cell. In horizontal gene transfer, one cell gives up a little piece of DNA and adds it to a second cell. And the second cell gains that DNA. All right, so this is how the second cell can increase its capacity to do things. It's gaining some genetic material. So in horizontal gene transfer, we're always going to look at how this genetic material can be passed from a donor cell, giving away a little bit of information, to a recipient cell, gaining that information. And again, what's so exciting about horizontal gene transfer is that it creates organisms with new genetic traits, and that can be really important in understanding how organisms work. So now let's think about conjugation. So conjugation is one mechanism by which horizontal gene transfer can occur. So let's think about what we need to know to understand conjugation. So the first thing is that only some cells can do conjugation. And it's only cells that have this thing called an F plasmid. So only F plasmid containing cells can act as a donor during conjugation. So here's an example of a donor cell. It's got its chromosomal DNA over here. But in addition to that DNA, it has an F plasmid over here. Okay, so that this is the kind of donor cell that contains an F plasmid that can participate in conjugation. That F plasmid contains genes that allow this cell to build a very specific structure called a pilus. So we would have learned about the pilus earlier in our microbiology course, and um, we know that that structure is capable of transferring genetic material from one cell to another. So again, our donor cell has this F plasmid, and that means they can grow this pilus structure. All right, anytime we have a cell that has an F plasmid and is capable of making a pilus, we give it a specific name. We call this cell an F plus cell. So any cell that contains an F plasmid and can make the pilus, we're gonna give that terminology, we're gonna call them an F plus cell. That F plus stands for being positive for that F plasmid. All right, in conjugation, these F plus donor cells can only form this pilus and connect to one other kind of cell. And they can only connect to cells that are lacking the F plasmid. We're gonna call that kind of cell an F minus cell. So only F minus cells can be the recipients during conjugation. So here's an example of a recipient. Again, it's got its chromosomal DNA, but it has no F plasmid. So we'll call that an F minus cell. All right, so F plus cells have the plasmid and can make the pilus. F minus cells lack a plasmid, the F plasmid, and cannot make the, a pilus. And these are the only two cells that can participate in conjugation with one another. So let's look more closely at how that process works. So we'll go through this step by step. So first, the F plus cell grows that pilus. So again, the F plus cell, the donor, 
has the F plasmid, so it has the information needed to grow a pilus. The F minus cell is nearby, lacks the plasmid, it can't grow a pilus of its own. Next, that pilus is going to attach to the F minus cell, and then the pilus retracts, it just tightens, it pulls the two cells closer together. So the F plus cell made the pilus, now the pilus is attaching the F plus and the F minus cells to one another. Next, the F plasmid in the F plus cell is copied, and a copy is sent into the F minus cell. So this uh, diagram is showing that process happening. Here's our F plasmid. It's being copied, so there's some DNA polymerase and some extra enzymes that make that happen. But all that's important is that this plasmid's being copied and a copy is being sent into the F minus cell. Okay. Next, the pilus breaks and it separates the two cells. And if we look at the recipient cell, it now contains an F plasmid. That makes it an F plus cell. And now it can act as a donor cell. So during this process, after the pilus breaks, the recipient cell is now an F plus cell. It now contains that F plasmid. So in the course of conjugation, we changed the recipient cell from F minus to F plus because it gained the F plasmid. During conjugation, the donor cell does not change at all. It still retains its F plasmid. It retains the ability to make a pilus. It can continue to go and perform conjugation with more cells and transfer that plasmid into more uh, recipient cells. So that's conjugation. Pretty straightforward. The F plasmid is copied from the donor to the recipient cell, and we create a new F plus cell from that recipient cell. Right. Now there's one way that conjugation can be slightly more complicated, and it happens when F plus cells undergo one slight modification. So here's another diagram representing an F plus cell. Again, it can, this cell contains the chromosome, and it contains this F plasmid. So the exact same kind of cell as we looked at previously, um, but I'm just representing it looking slightly different. All right, so again, some F plus cells can undergo a process that changes them, and this process is called recombination. So during recombination, um, the F plasmid is incorporated into the cell's chromosome. So during recombination, we're actually going to combine these two pieces of DNA together. All right. So cells with the F plasmid incorporated into the chromosome are called HFR cells. So again, if this F plus cell undergoes recombination, these pieces of DNA connect to one another, and we create a new kind of cell called an HFR cell. It stands for high frequency of recombination. And an HFR cell has that plasmid attached to the chromosome. So we've connected the two pieces of DNA together. So this is just an F plus cell, but the plasmid is part of the chromosome. And so we give it a special name, an HFR cell. And so let's look at what happens during conjugation for an HFR cell. We want to see how it's different. Okay. So again, some F plus cells are special from HFR cells. The plasmid is in the chromosome. What happens then? So the process is going to begin exactly the same, right? Any cell that contains that F plasmid information is capable of making a pilus and attaching to a F minus recipient cell. So here, the HFR cell grows that pilus. The pilus attaches to that F minus recipient, and the pilus retracts, again, pulling the two cells closer together. So that's just like what happened in normal conjugation. All right, next, the F plasmid is copied within the HFR cell, and the copy is passed into the F minus cell through the pilus. So we can see that starting to happen here. We're going to begin copying that plasmid DNA. We're going to continue copying it and co uh, send the copy into the recipient cell. But one important thing is happening here. Because the plasmid is connected to the chromosome, it is possible for this copying process to copy plasmid DNA 
and chromosomal DNA. So this is special about conjugation with an HFR cell, is that this process of copying the plasmid and sending it to the recipient cell may also transfer chromosomal DNA from the donor cell. So we'll do the, cop we'll do the copying process. We'll send the DNA through the pillus. And then again, the pillus will break, separating the two cells. And that recipient cell has gained some plasmid DNA and perhaps some chromosomal DNA as well. Now, what happens to this recipient uh, cell at this point is highly variable. It depends on exactly how much of the plasmid was passed through. Um, the pillus breaks pretty easily. And so how much plasmid DNA gets transferred depends on how, much, how long the pillus survives. If the entire plasmid is transferred, it might reform a free-floating plasmid and become an F, a normal F plus cell. Uh, this plasmid DNA might also incorporate into the chromosome, making this donor, sorry, this recipient cell another HFR cell. And then in some cases, not the right combination of material was transferred, and the DNA will actually get degraded, and this cell will remain an F minus cell. Again, what happens to this particular recipient cell is highly variable, and it depends on the exact sequences of DNA that were passed and how much DNA was passed. But if we focus on the simple uh, role of conjugation, again, conjugation passes this plasmid, this F plasmid DNA from a donor cell to a recipient cell. And this recipient cell now has extra genetic information that it might be able to utilize. All right, so those, that's the, those are the ways that conjugation can happen. I just want to point out a couple quick details about conjugation before we wrap up. And the first is that with conjugation, the donor and recipient cell must both be alive in the same place at the same time, right? That's because this requires that cell-to-cell -cell contact through the pillus. This is a, um, different than the other forms of horizontal gene transfer. So in the other forms of horizontal gene transfer, the donor, donor cell dies, but that doesn't happen in conjugation. The donor cell remains alive and retains its F plasmid. So that's a way that conjugation is different than transformation and transduction. The last thing I want to point out about conjugation is that conjugation with those HFR cells can transfer chromosomal DNA in addition to the F plasmid sequence. And so that's a unique consequence of that mechanism of conjugation. So we'll end there. Um, and that's all the information about conjugation we need to know. Uh, if you find any of that confusing, I hope you'll let me know and we'll talk the answers over in class or on the discussion boards. So I'll talk to you all again real soon.